Hello folks and welcome back to the Path to Recovery podcast series. We're on episode 8, Are You Being Socially Responsible in Your Recovery Path? What I've noticed, especially when it comes to social media and and joining some of these uh, groups that are about recovery, the truth that you find about a lot of them is, and my heart goes out to them, I see so many struggles and so much pain, and, and yet... I think for the newcomer, the social media aspect of it might assist them in keeping on going forward, and yet it also can assist them in going backward. And and I say that because I've been watching it now for a few days, and people don't comment too much on things about, I've got 10 years clean, or I've got 15 years clean. Oh, so it, you seem to see all the responses for the about, 30 days clean, I've got 30 seven minutes days. clean. I just took a hit five hours ago, and you know what I mean? Yeah. They're struggling in the newness of it. And maybe that's a point is when you start getting a little bit more time, maybe you don't find the need of that interaction. I don't know. Or when you're such a newbie to recovery, the last thing that you really want is somebody who's got 18 years that doesn't know what it's like now. You think so? I think, do you think do you think you were in that meld in that form when you were freshly clean and all of a sudden people are telling you what to do and then here you are 18 years later do you have anybody at let's say our spiritual place that we go to or anyone in town or anyone else that's trying to tell you how I'll how say, things should be I'll say this in my familiarity I do remember especially being in the rooms of alcoholics anonymous or narcotics anonymous and I would see people who had 25 and 30 years clean and they had a group or an entourage of people around them you're told in the rooms hang on to the winners man you know what make friends with the people who got some time and what I found for me and this is only speaking for me what I found is those people who had 25 years clean and 30 years clean they were still sick. Well, yeah, we know. That I didn't we, want what they had. Right. We know there's a deeper thing. You, you. I understand that now, but when you're a newcomer, you don't know what you're looking for. Mm. And you're looking for those people who will assist you. And you always say, you know what, you don't want somebody to buy your bull crap and da, 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 da. And is that really true? Because I saw so many people clinging to these folks because they wanted to be somebody in the world of Narcotics Anonymous. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, they were clinging on to hope. Right. You know, somebody give me some hope. But for me, I couldn't find anybody with that much time that I wanted anything to do with what they had. I still found the sickness. What are you trying to put across here? That these people that are on these social media groups or arenas are just the same thing? They just want to express themselves and say, hey, man, I'm seven days. Or are they looking for someone? I think, well, no, no, no. I I think social media is doing exactly what they needed to do for them. Some people are like, you know what, check this out. I'm doing really good. And here's, you know, here's my photo. And this is what's happened in my life where I just want to be acknowledged for myself that I got 30 days or I've got a year and I got two years and I got five years. And I think it's, that's spectacular. Mm -hmm. I think where a lot of the addicts themselves who might be like me is, man, I didn't want what a lot of those folks had. I wanted somebody who had some depth into him and had some meaning. And I think for me, that's why I found Cocaine Anonymous so much more appealing for my own self personally is because they had a direction. And I looked at him and I thought, man, I, I want what you got. I do want that. Well, then isn't it just a matter of time to find what you're looking for? Or do you think you have to actually get kicked off a curb 10 or 15 times before the right thing comes across your path? I think it's entirely possible for all of it. Yeah. I do. I think it's entirely possible. When I look at these platforms, it's like kind of the reason why I quit going to the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous is because I didn't see any more value. It wasn't going to teach me how to do my everyday life. For you. For me. Yeah. It wasn't going to teach me how to take care of these children because you have an hour and a half to tell people what's happening in your life. See, that's that's what I was talking about. Remember I told you how I had to go through my weeks. And this is a part where I'm pretty sure... It would be very applicable for everybody that's going through the recovery is, I think, the best possible way, which we can't do because the country just doesn't make it happen, but whatever. The best possible way is to get you out of your element completely and for an extended period of time, but with focused attention on you, which we can't do because we don't have money to fund it. We don't have governments that care enough. We don't have anything that's going to allow it to happen. But if we would be able to, if we could put together programs that are, you're going to be here for six weeks straight from start to finish. We're going to teach you how to cook. We're going to teach you how to clean a toilet. We're going to teach you how to get these everyday occurrences that are societal living. 
and we're going to get you this skill set back. And in the process, we're going to clean you. Wouldn't that be great if our America itself could be able to help our loved ones, um, whether we know you or not, out of the crisis? Wouldn't that be fantastic? Mm. And the truth is, is even if as an addict, I would have been offered something. Look, because people well, would I'm not say, saying hey, offering. Yeah, I'm well, not saying offering. Here, I've got a class. This is available to you, so if you want it, this is how it goes down. You give up your life for this amount of time, and you do this. But and I'm, you're going to have a parent who's like me going, yeah, but you know what? I got like four kids and I got a job. That's, that's true. That's I got, true. I got life going on. You know, I think that what it would be offered would be fantastic. But yet, how do you provide for my family right. while I'm trying to learn how to be a human being? How do we get that done? How do we get people to recover if they've got so many I can't because I, I can't because we've got roadblocks that we create ourselves, but, and then we got ro- roadblocks because our nation itself is not addressing a lot of the issues until I, we're busted. And understand, though, part of your problem was the fact that you had kids while you were doing all of this. That's part of the problem. So solving the problem is it taking the kids away? Probably because you know what. That could be the catalyst. Could have been. It might not have been. But But guess what? Everybody's so different. But at the same time, if we're trying to find something that people fit into, all they're going to do is keep playing the games. I mean, remember that movie Fight Club? Yeah. Right? What were they doing? This this guy and this girl were faking because they had an addiction to the addictions that they didn't have. But they had an addiction to go to all these meetings and to be part of something. And to up each other. Yeah, and to up each other. And then do we have a line to draw? I mean, just imagine what the country is going through, what the government is going through when they're being addressed with a group of people that are like, you know, look at the look at the heroin problem we've got, look at the meth problem, you know, the latest we've screamer got kids in politics. Back doing dope, and, right. and for a while there, it wasn't happening. But but what do they do? And I'm not defending the country because I think we're way behind the times in taking care of our own people. But what in our political arena, what could be done? And I'm not necessarily asking you the question. I'm just putting it out there. What could be done to be able to take the right steps to help people recover? Do we have the infrastructure in our current judicial system, in our legislation, in our laws, in anything that could actually do it? Or do we have so many stupid roadblocks and so many stupid politicians and people with agendas that you know, I can't do that because then that'll take away from my heavy spending constituents that always give me all my elections every we time. can't offer it for free because right. somebody's got to make a buck. Right. Who's going to make the money? What do we do? We can't hit the, you know, the pharmaceutical industry because they need to make money. It's like, really? But anyway, so where do we go with it? I think it's Can a valid you... question because, because look, I'm looking on this social media site and, and I'm an addict, man, but I'm a recovered addict. Yeah. I don't ha- I'm not a practicing addict anymore, but I see somebody actually a valid post. Check mm-hmm. this out, man. This is a valid post. And this person's like, Hey, has anybody out there ever gotten clean, like on their own from heroin? You know, without I, being kind of pushed or bumped without or, being without locked up without, right. you know, medication has it happened. I know of one human being in my life who did it. That's my friend. It's not that my friend didn't continue an addiction in other things right. because of the cycle of us as he, being addicts. But he was able to stop using heroin. But he was able to stop. Without and not only, any other drugs? Yeah, he just stopped. It, he said for himself, it was as if something came to him spiritually or whatever and shook his world. He thought he was going to die, and in one second, no longer did he use drugs, but he had absolutely lost his mind. That's his story. Hmm. I know that he did it. I know that he did it without anything. Is that going to help that human that's out there on the internet going, can you help me breathe? Do you know, is there a solution for me? Questions and answers are one thing. It's actions are the important part, right? It is. Social media is a platform that doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help anybody do anything. It It just allows people to yell it out. It keeps us on the platform so we can stay uh, invested into something that truly doesn't exist. It's just like the Fight Club concept. Oh, well, here's social media. I can express myself here. I'm not looking to heal because, you know, I'm still liking my life in the mess and the chaos that it is. People don't say that, but their actions tell it. They just don't know how to get out. Exactly. But social media isn't exactly a place for people to get out. It's a place for people to stay in. And they're designed to hook you. Find another addiction. They are designed to be an addiction. So where do we go? Where do we all get to go to find that thing? Everybody's path is different. Everybody's cure or recovery is going to be different. 
So if 10 people tell that person, oh, I did it, I did it, well, how'd you do it? Yeah, I just said no. Or the next person saying, you know, I basically ran my car into a wall and then I had this epiphany because my brain had to go through surgery and I had to go boom and then all of a sudden everything was fine. But There's going to be 10 different people yeah. saying 10 different things as to how to go cold turkey. There's no standard with any of this stuff. There's no, hey, if you do this, if you do these 12 steps, you're going to be, no. no that doesn't, doesn't happen. doesn't guarantee It anything. doesn't happen. It comes to the individual. It always comes back to the individual. Well, in the rooms, they'll say it works if you work it. And that's, you know, kind of like that's the truth. Yeah. Um, the point was is that they were guidelines, right? So the 12 steps are yeah. guidelines in order to get your life back together, work through some stuff, you know, go through like the four step. And, right. and if you're saying you're amends to people that you believe mm. get with that God, you've get wronged with your or that have wronged beliefs. you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I think it's great for some people. For me, my path needed to be a little bit different. There's a of multitude course. of paths to take in order for the addict to recover. Uh, do we recover forever for however long our forever is? It's possible. Right. I think looking on that social media platform and I saw the desperate and dying. I saw mm -hmm. that amongst all the other, look at me, I've got this. Look at, and some of them are extremely valid. Look, I've yeah. got this much time, man. We're looking for validation yet still outside of ourselves. Right. And I, I think the part of me is just wondering... Because I may back out of this platform. Understood, yeah. I don't want to stay in the platform because there's nothing I can do in there. Right. So remember what we were talking about I a few days ago. I can't help anybody in there. Remember what I, we were talking about a few days ago. You have some people in your life that have problems. Yeah. Deep problems. And the truth is, is that you can't do anything about it. What do we do when All we, we know? All we can do is the booklets that we've created. We yeah. can create these kind of uh, podcasts for people to voice their opinion. I would really love to have you know people write in. Well, what do you think about this? And that kind of option would be incredible. Or, or would it? You know, you mean for this for our podcast? For our podcast, well, what we could do is actually make these podcasts go live. Yeah. That way it's happening real time and we could advertise that it's a podcast party or a, a Facebook party or right. social media party or, you know, whatever party there is out there for social media. We could just say, hey, there's a live broadcast happening. A funny thing, though, is, is as I'm looking at this platform, the social media aspect of it, is it valuable for the addicts? Have you ever heard of anybody that said, wow, I found an answer on social media? I haven't. I haven't either. I it see doesn't mean it's not there. People get lost in social media because mm -hmm. us being addicts, just because we might not be using drugs, doesn't mean that our addiction can't take a form in another right another just, area. Just like our episode about addictions. I mean, the truth is, the addictions come from every angle. You know, your your friend that stopped using heroin started doing other things that were an addictive behavior. Although so healthier, still the, yeah, they addictive. were healthy. But again, we talk. We're trying to talk about this part. Folks, the truth is, is that we're trying to go deeper than just A, B, and C to get to Z. We're trying to go deep and understand that it's there's, the cure is within us. It is, not, it is not that we have to go through processes. We just have to have a better understanding that it happens inside, in our heart, in our soul, our spirit, our sense of love, our sense of existence. If we don't approach it that way, then all we're doing is still band-aiding. Mm. Because if I didn't go through those 24 weeks of my therapy, I wouldn't have known about my thought processes, my cognitive actions. Right. You know, I wouldn't have known that. But did that really get me healed? No, but what it did was it got me on another path. It got me on a deeper seeking path. It allowed me to know that I'm still not 100%. But you know what? I know where it's missing. And for me, it was God. And until I got to the God understanding... Or let me rephrase that. Until I brought back God into my life, mm. I don't think I was going to be fully cured or healed. You think you kept still um, held those emotional wounds, right? Absolutely. Straight up 100%. So I'm kind of looking, because I've been out of the rooms of recovery for quite some time, and I'm looking at all the different steps that are taken in, in the recovery process. And I believe what Bear and I are kind of looking at is there's a, you know, step four, you're actually, you're making amends to the people that you've harmed. And you've also got, a, I can't remember if it's step 11, to where you've got to take a, another inventory of other folks um, who may have harmed you. And I, I think, and I, I could be wrong on this step because I have been out of the rooms uh, for quite a while. 
But when Barry work and I are working on our recovery, the fact is, is this for us, it's not that we have to worry about going back to be an addict again. And that's the truth. Neither one of us have any desire. It's not like I, yeah. I have a really bad day and I think about going back to using because it never happens. Right. Never comes to my mind. To but that's ever. not the point because I can have suicidal moments mm -hmm. and I'm not using. Right. I can have really deep down painful situations that are happening or where I just feel useless, worthless, pointless. Where's my value? Right. Your physical body is cringing. Everything. It's aching. It's pounding. Yeah. Some of it yeah. may be absolutely because of my drug addiction. Some of it's newfound stuff that's arisen. But Bear and I work on ourselves. And I think whether you're in recovery or whether you're not in recovery, um, the fact is, is what are you going to do with your life? And my job is to clean up my soul so I can get out of here. You know what? This planet Earth is a painful place. And that's, you know, the truth. We get blips and moments of, you know, this is great. And look at me. Let me take pictures of me, my family, so you can witness my joy. We put it on the social media. Sometimes it's just that moment because our life is in shambles. But we want to pretend that our life is fantastic. But when it comes to Bear and I, our life is really good. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of stuff. And... <laughs> We love each other's company and we each value our alone time and our time together. But I must tell you, when it comes to day-to-day -day thinking, feeling, all those emotions, we go to God. Yeah. And we make sure that we have a spiritual practice that takes us there because it, it doesn't matter where you are in your life when whether you believe you're an addict or not. If you're not spiritually healing yourself, you're destined to repeat cycles. And sometimes those cycles mean I'm going to bring in a, a partner that's not really healthy. And, or maybe it's a narcissist or, or they're willing for me to step all over them. I mean, I'm, I'm putting it out there is there's so many different aspects. Yeah. There's so many different aspects, aspects of, of the people that can call into our life. So to say that is every moment of my days, I look at what's taking place, what's transpiring, whether I'm in the supermarket, whether I'm on the road. How am I doing in this life? How am I doing today? And at this moment, I might be doing fantastic. And it shows in my reflections. It shows in, in everybody that, that I come you. across. Yep. I'm going through the aisles. Everybody's smiling. Love is peaceful. I mean, sometimes you can get kind of blissed out on this happy stuff. Yeah. And then you can come around the corner and you got somebody in your lane in the grocery store. And you're just trying to slide by. You don't have a cart. And somebody's like, you know, looking at you all mad dog, you know. Yeah. What are you doing in my way? In that moment, you get to reflect what part of that is me. What part of that is a lesson? Yeah. Because we look at every single aspect of our life and every moment, how am I doing right now? Yeah. And if somebody comes around the corner and they're mad dogging, is that a reflection or a projection? You know, it's sometimes it's just not about me and that's okay. Right. What's about me is how am I going to react to what they've projecting to me? Right. I have to keep my side of the street clean. And then that used to be said all the time in the rooms of any anonymous program. Keep your side of the street clean. Right. You know, don't try to get into other people's business. And I wonder if social media, if we haven't failed drastically, although you try to look for the benefits and and we all want to share the pictures of the things that we love in life. Yeah. You know, I'm guilty. My grandchildren, like, my love, our like hiking. We've, like we've said before in a previous cast, or maybe it's another one, is there's a thing called a mask and we hide behind it. The question we we always have to ask ourselves is, in this moment, am I putting on a mask or am I showing myself? And if I'm showing myself, what actually is myself? When you're talking about those moments and how someone else could be having a bad moment and you're in the middle of a good moment, what we do next is most important. I used to tell my kids all the time, it's not about what you did, it's about what you do after what you did. So if they like threw a baseball through one of the windows, it isn't throwing the baseball through the window, it's what are your thoughts after it happens? What do you believe's coming next? And then what are you going to do next? Do you tell the truth, go up and say, oh my God, I'm sorry I threw a ball through the window? Or do you run and hide and hope that your parents don't ever find out it was you, mm -hmm. even though the baseball's in the house and they know it's you and they saw you do it <laughs> or whatever reason. It comes down to our actions in the moments and the actions that we take are a derivative or they come from the thoughts that we have. And as we've been learning more so in the last four years, the thoughts that we have in our brain is driven off of a belief system, a belief system that is, am I a good person? Am I deserving? Am I worthy? If you can answer yes to those, then your action or your thoughts should follow that belief. Then your thoughts should be, I'm worthy, I'm okay, I'm strong, I'm okay, I can handle this, I'm okay, I, I know it, I don't, I don't think it, I know, 
I believe strongly that I am a good person. Therefore, throwing the ball through the window, it was a mistake. Let me go. Uh, what is the phrase you use lately? I just show up. For just yourself. show up for yourself. So let me just show up and take the responsibility. That's part of the thought process and the actions behind it. So when we're having these moments and somebody else around us is having a bad moment, but we're in the middle of our good moment, it's how do we receive it? How do we put it and integrate that with our belief and into our thoughts? And then how do we then export it out? Are we how do we try show to it? change yeah. their day by showing appreciation and gratitude and sharing some love with them? So or maybe we can change their moment. Right. Or simply apologizing. Even if they don't yep. see you as being in the way, they're just having a bad day and you go, oh, I'm sorry. Or you say, hey, hey let me help you with that cart. Let me help you with that Let cart. Here, come in front of me. You. I, I got nothing. I'm, I'm good. Go ahead in front of me. Yeah. Because once we change that moment, once we change the emotions behind the moment, it's amazing how we can change people's lives. And I do this thing called paying it forward, and I think I'm I'm almost getting addicted to it. <laughs> but no, I, I don't make a lot of money, so it, if people knew that, they'd be surprised at what I'm doing. Every uh, gas station, every grocery store, wherever I'm going, my goal is to whatever the change is, is going to the next person in line. Whether there's anybody behind me or not, I give it to the person at the register. So that they know it's going to the next person. Now, if the next person takes it or not is purely up to them. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I can do it all the time, but I do it when I can. Yes. Because I can afford it. Whether I can afford it financially or not, I can afford it emotionally and spiritually. The gift of giving for me is more important to me than whether I have $5 tomorrow. It's like I have it now. Why do I worry about it? So it's that action that I take. I believe I am abundant. So what's the difference? Mm. So why not give what you have when you can? I like that. I do. You're a very loving human. I guess kind of where we're going with this is are we showing up for ourselves? What is it about social media? Are we getting the word out there? How are we helping other people? All right. Is social media valuable to the addict? I'm not so sure. Yeah. I think it might be another way for us to get hooked in. Right. And it is what it is. I mean, that's kind of where we are. But I may have to personally back down out of it perfectly fine. Yeah. Because again, the, the goal for us as individuals is we can do whatever we can, but we can't sacrifice ourselves in the process of helping others. Correct. We have to make sure we're always good and we're always in a good place. And that means everybody, including our own kids, our parents, our brothers and sisters, anything, you know? All the good stuff. Yeah. So thanks for letting me vent. Excellent. Wonderful little podcast. Thank you very much, folks, for listening in. Stay tuned for our next podcast. Coming Thanks, up soon. guys. Keep showing up for yourself. Woo-hoo. Thanks again to Laura Lee for joining me on the podcast. Always a pleasure having her words of wisdom and her voice be part of this path or this journey that we're all on together. Folks, if you could, as you're listening in, please subscribe to the podcast. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the YouTube page. Whatever it takes to be a part of this. We may be venturing into live podcasts as well. You might want to join in with us. Also, we're looking for input, and if you have any comments that you want to add, whatever the media is that you're using in order to listen to this podcast, please leave us comments. Maybe there's some suggestions. Maybe you have great ideas that you'd love us to talk about and maybe get an episode with you as a co-speaker as well. Again, thank you very much, folks, for everything you do and for being on the path and for walking in this life as we're all part of love and we're all part of this together. So thank you very much, and we will see you next time.